Live. This part two. What else did we talk? What else did we got to talk about, man? Well, you know, we've been talking about informants and stuff. Oh, you know, it's boy. quite interesting because if we look at the movies that have been out recently, so we look at Judas and the Black Messiah, William O'Neill. William O'Neill was far worse in regards to what he did yeah, yeah. than what is projected in the movie. So there's this thing in terms of humanizing oh, the yeah, informant yeah, yeah. a little bit, all right? Movie. Yeah. Now, United States government versus Billy Holiday. They got an agent in there who supposedly goes ahead, black man, gets Billy Holiday busted and arrested <laughs> and, you know, actually in prison. She comes out. He's still assigned to follow her. And in this film, they supposedly fall in love. Well, guess, well the, 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 the implication is that she, she, she was boinking. You know what I mean? Whether she loved him or not, that's that's a whole other thing. And she was born in male and female, whatever happened. Look, it's a movie. I don't. But my thing, look, read the book. Look, Spike Lee's Spike Lee's X. Come on, you read. You gonna read Spike Lee? You gonna listen to Spike Lee's uh, 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 Malcolm X? Or are you gonna read? Are you gonna read The Dead or Rising? The Life of Malcolm X by Les Payne. Research or, by Les Payne. Or you see where Spike Lee got his film from, which was from, from the James Con- Baldwin. Okay, James Baldwin script, but still it's a script. That's what I'm trying to. That's what I'm trying. It's still a script. It, you still, it's a move. It's a film. You got to do certain things. It's like a play. You got to do certain things. But this research, look. The reason why I love this book so much, I love historical novels. But remember, they're still historical. They're novels. This is a. This is a different cat. This is an investigative journalist. An investigative journalist is different than a historian doing doing work. Different than a novelist doing work. An investigative journalist. You can't beat this. Now, uh, uh, Philip Bailey is going to come out with a book, uh, with a Malcolm X book l- later on, you know what I mean? You know, but Philip's still, he's still a, 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 a academician. He's not an investigative journalist. I'm very, want to see his book. He's got stuff. Everybody's got some stuff. But that's why this book is so important to me. But, you know, you make that argument, then you get up with Manny Marable or whatever else it is. Again, which he's was an a academic. Real, real disappointment. But he's an academic. That's what I'm saying. That's different. Real disappointment. That's my point. Who... Even if even if you, you bring some book and you cite this and that, my point is, yeah, okay, but what are their credentials? Look, if an anthropologist comes to me and gives me some information, that's going to be different than a hip hop artist coming give me some information. He's an anthropologist. They say, for, for, if it's better still, if a sociologist comes to me and says some, I, and the anthropologist comes and say, uh, uh, I don't know, uh, uh, a skateboarder, right? Well, guarantee. The socialists don't know what the anthropologists know because the socialists just, uh, by definition, studies a slither. <laughs> you heard me? The, the anthropologist studies the whole thing. It's going to be different. So this has to do with Henry Louis Gates, right? Since oh, now he's no, supposedly yes. a historian oh, and that's not where his training was. Man, that's not what his PhD know, is in. Yes, and yes, now, yes, you know, yes, after yes, he yes, went yes. ahead and uh, did all kinds of crap in terms of BBC. They went ahead and empowered him to go ahead and now flip from BBC, which the stuff that he did for BBC was dangerous. And now, all of a sudden, it's PBS. Look, Uh, look, everybody's into celebrity. He is the, he's a celebrity academic. You know what, celebrity? Let me, let me, uh, not, uh, get me, don't get me wrong. I'm not dumping on, uh, say, for instance, uh, no, let me leave him alone. Let me just stay with this guy. Did you hear Cornell West couldn't get tenure at Harvard? Yeah, but what difference does it make? He, he's, he's up here at a Union Theological Seminary. It was a much better place for him than, than, than Harvard. Well, he was there before. I know, but I'm he trying to say. Come, he had come a few years ago, and I thought that, you know, he was there, so he could really begin to get his credentials as being in the community and being a quote That's activist. That's my point. If I have a choice between putting him at Harvard, Princeton, or Union Theological Cemetery, Seminary, Seminary, <laughs> well, guess what? That's the place for Put him. him. In the classes can't be that big, whatever. I mean, he's Put not marking any pa- papers anyway. Yeah, he'll really? just be lecturing and carrying yeah, on. Because he, he's a celebrity. He, they use him to get more people, or so-called quality people, to go to, uh, the, to the seminary. You know what I mean? Which is different. Wow. It's a different animal. You know what I mean? Funny, you know, I'm piece, I, when I touch at, uh, at, uh, at UCT, I didn't have to do papers because I was doing a special thing. But usually you got this mark of like 300 kids. You know, well, how the hell is that going to happen? You know what I mean? <laughs> oh, no. So academics got a whole other thing going, you know, it's, it's whatever, whatever, whatever. No, an, an interesting piece, you know, and um, 
I don't know what Henry Louis Gates had to do with uh, tenure or not tenure as far as Cornell West. You know, uh, see, that's their problem. Oh, it is. That's their problem. I mean, it's not our problem. That's I'm just going world. ahead. I that's mean, listen. World. That's oh, yes, they were. You know, and guess what? You, you know, ac- you know, academics is going to change. Do you, you, people don't understand that it's going to be back where it should be. All these schools are going to crumble because I think Google's got this whole thing where gonna be, everybody's going to be learning online. But if you want, but 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 only the certain elite schools, maybe some some HBCUs, what is historical things may still exist. Well, but you saw stuff the stuff be- that had gone on with, um, well, I mean now since the pandemic, and we actually see how much can actually be accomplished without classes in person. Uh huh. You know, I mean that's been an interesting, interesting uh, phenomena. And in some instances, it's better than people expected. Yep. In another instances, you know, there's still some stuff. Well, the thing is, if, if, you're, that's if, if, if you're doing a left to the imagination. Well, if you're doing under, say for instance, you're lecturing. You you got your your classes. I'm gonna I'm gonna give it. It's not a, it's not two hours. Let's say your class is two two hours, or let's say an hour and a half, right? And you're lecturing to 300 kids. There's no difference than, than, than what you did then. That really is no difference as far as the, the interpersonal Not much. Than, 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 than zooming. Not it much. really isn't. Not but much. however, you know what I mean? The college experience goes to be about some other stuff. You know what I mean? Da, 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 da. Yeah. But, but, but when you have a, 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 a class and you only have five people, that's going to make a difference. Yeah, there's the whole issue in regards to the socialization because in many instances, you know, it is the college experience by which people actually go ahead and come into some kind of adulthood. That's the transition from being young adults into, like, full adults, maybe. Well, the thing is, that's a whole other thing. I've studied, believe me, I had to go through this, and I, I give young people this whole thing every time. People don't understand. And this whole laws and trying to govern, it just doesn't work. Look, I, I do this thing about the prosecution cycles. I don't know if I told you, I've maybe told you before. Zero, zero to nine is what's called the physical cycle. The optimum time for you, because remember, you're like this, and then all of a sudden you're like that. You know what I mean? That's 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 your optimum physical cycle. Okay, it doesn't mean you ain't, you ain't thinking or whatever, whatever. Then from nine to uh, from nine to eighteen uh, is basically uh, what you call your mental cycle. It means it, it, this 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 what it sounds like. That, that's the mo- the energy coming. That's when you come into your own. You start questioning things and da 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 da. Eighteen to twenty seven is your sexual cycle. Okay. Then from 27 to 36 is your spiritual cycle. The problem is that 18 to 27 is your sex. That's on so much energy. Sex is the energy the most. That's why they recruit you. You know, you're not fully developed. You don't have you don't, you don't have your uh, 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 spiritual yet. And that's when you do all your experimentation or whatever have you. So when they make these laws, when you when you say, oh no, you can't do this. Uh, you know, you can't do that. You can't do that. This that's a disaster. That's disaster because it's not in the human nature not to be boinking. At 22, <laughs> the problem, no, the problem lies when when you have a 21 year old, right, is trying to you know seduce a 17 year old or 16 year old because they're not developed yet into that. They're not even in the same category. And so re- what really happens is, you, is they're, they're being they're, they're being cowards. They're, they're being they're, they're being you know. So what's the cycle for people in their 70s? <laughs> no, it, go, it, no, it, go, it goes no, it goes around again. So 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 so, so from basically, basically 36 to 45 is your growth again or physical again, right? That's where you got a lot of uh, uh you know you got a lot of people pumping iron or whatever. Then from 45 to uh, what's what's the nine after 45 54 is your uh, mental again. Right, that's when you have a lot of your people, your CEOs or whatever have you. Right, uh-huh. then, then from uh, 54 to 63 is your sexual again. Right, then from 63 to 72 is your spiritual again. Okay, and then it repeats okay. like that every nine years. So nine. basically, you're in your spiritual, we're in our spiritual thing right now, okay. and that's why that's why that's why you can't. That's why when when, when somebody let's say somebody 54 whatever they are. Right, uh, 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 the second sexual thing. They they jump to the to the no, the novice sexual person in that other category when they should not be doing that because they're taking advantage. They, again, they're, they're they're they ain't got no rap. They're being whatever. You know what I mean? It's 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 interesting. Don't get me wrong. There are people that are exceptions. You know what I mean? You might have somebody that that really is meant you know, has a mental thing to to, to 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 deal with that. You know. Mm-hmm. So anyway, so what you what what you what. what 
So we were talking. We were, we were talking about the the agents and, and oh, yeah, humanizing them or whatever, which is which is a problem because you know in Black Lives Matter, every other person is an informant, there you go. a paid agent, a member of the police department, That's for sure. That's why I'm saying you can't do the stuff you did before. We we knew when they started. But look, when, 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 when in the '60s, you know what we used to do. We say we know we infiltrate. You know, first of all, you don't talk over the phone. We know that. that. When when you know you had an agent in your thing, you say yeah, we had to put up posters or make the zero. Well, you put up the posters. <laughs> you give them something to do. Yeah. You know what I mean? right. Something useful to do. That's uh-huh. the whole point. You know what I mean? And I don't think that Black Lives Matter, any people like that, they you have to study history. I wish they don't. You know, you know, which they don't. Now, uh, I don't know if you heard one of the latest issues in regards to Black Lives Matter is uh, people Tamir Rice, it's his family, Michael Brown's family, is yeah. calling him out yeah. because they've raised yep. a great deal of money deal. and have not done anything in regards to the communities, which That's essentially right. gave them their start. In fact, in fact, she she so-called moved to Kentucky. In a good house with its children to move to, whatever, a child or whatever, to move to Kentucky. It's paid for like that. So she's living, you, you, saying she's going to be closer to the thing. She who? Uh, to, uh, Tamika Mallory, whatever her name is. The, the, the girl is talk, talks real good. You know what oh, I mean? Tamika Mallory, that's one of, you know, that's a uh, protege of, of Al Sharpton. Oh, I know that. But the, the point is. You're talking about that. But I don't even know if she's Black Lives Matter. She's. You know, she's well, doing they, her own thing. Yeah, but but they, she's getting that that kind of thing. Black Lives Matter. That's a whole other thing. You know, they, w- w- what what are you talking about? Trans lives matter. Blah blah blah. Tamika blah, blah, blah. Mallory is a protege of Al Sharpton. She was doing. <laughs> she was uh, uh, working for him. As a matter of fact, at one particular point, she she was like his assistant. And I recall this because. Um, Myself and my my daughter, we were in Madison Square Garden at the. They used to have this uh, black college basketball tournament. Oh yeah, yeah. All right, historically black colleges. So anyway, I was sitting down on the floor. We were sitting not that far, and my daughter, who, who at that time was very young, asked if we could go over and get a picture. So I said, okay, cool. You know, I know Al or whatever. So I went over. I'm talking to Al. Whatever you know, we got the picture and all the rest of the soul stuff, and I got on him about his support for charter schools. Yeah. And you know, this again, he was, get, he was getting paid. No, this was this was a while ago. This okay. is uh, oh my god, how many man? Twelve. Okay. You know, so it's over a decade ago. Okay. You know. Anyway, um, you know, we got into you know a discussion, and I said, look, there are numerous public schools in the black community that are high performing public schools and you don't even you're not interested in them nobody's interested in them they're not being replicated which of course the department of education the department of miseducation should be doing that oh well i need to go to some of these places i said well look man why don't you go ahead and get in touch with me? Here, give your information to my assistant Tamika Mallory uh, you know what happened well, you know, see, nothing. Well, but hey, you know. And then the next time I saw Tamika Mallory, uh, I went into uh, where was I? I was in Harlem, and I ran into Tamika Mallory with Ramali Graham's mother, Constance Malcolm, who I know lives, you know, kind of like well, at least in my precinct. I can't say really in my neighborhood. As a matter of fact, I need to call her and see how she's doing. She's one of the people who gave testimony. Uh, during the UN Commission okay. that I was talking about, but uh, I hadn't seen that. I mean, I'm like that, yeah. you know. I, and I asked, I said, "That's like the commission that went down to Mississippi and said, hey, this is worse than anything else.'" <laughs> well, that was another one. Oh, all right, but okay, yeah, you know, the whole thing, just as Brother Malcolm was saying, you know, we need the international community to go ahead yeah. and look at this, as well as us looking at it ourselves. Well, that's the interesting thing because we people have done so much for us. I just said Malcolm. We just, let's just show Malcolm. And you notice Malcolm smiles. Brother Malcolm. Brother, Malcolm. Brother Minister. Sorry. Just had to do that. Good uh, smile. Look, it's kind of, to me, look, let me bury Al Sharpton forever. <laughs> don't, don't give me, no, no, they, they have other things. Like like my first audio <laughs> drama, my first audio drama, BAI, live audio drama, was Day of Absence. 
that's Douglas Turner Ward, but because he had called it for a day of absence, and I wanted to show people what a day of absence was, that's so we did that play. That's Carlos yeah. Russell. Yeah. Oh, okay. Carlos Russell, Black Solidarity Day. Okay, yes, yes. But he, he's the one that got on TV. Well, however, he got the, he got the sign for that. But what, Who? What, no, he called Ira Dixon. Chompton? Yeah, because it was some sort of Brooklyn march, whatever have you. Yeah. Now, you're talking about, some, you're talking about something earlier. This was like, uh, this was like 89. Oh, okay, this okay, was, late, late, later. late. This is okay, some other action, somebody, some happy right. Brooklyn, blah, blah, blah. Okay. No, no, I, 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 I know. Because, right. you know, Black Solidarity. Okay. That's, that's, well, here's, now remember, what did I first do when I first came to BAI at 82 on? What was I doing? I was recording for, you know, for... Uh, you know, for Alam Bay's, you know, all his stuff up at, at Harriet Tubman and 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 and, and Smory and the rest of that stuff. You know, all that stuff. that's what we that's what we did. We record those for them, give them the taste, whatever have you. And of course, they would have shop in there a lot, whatever it is. Sometimes, you know, automatic people would be there, right? And one of the last times, and this must have been late eighties. I don't know. One of the last, one of the times, maybe it was in the, even in the nineties. No, I had stopped with them in the eighties. You know, uh, afterwards, sometimes I would ask them questions. And I said, I said, well, well Reverend Allen, blah, blah, blah. He said, we don't talk about that. Place. <laughs> <laughs> and when he said that, I was like, wait a second. You know who I am. You know what we're doing. You wouldn't even be famous if it wasn't for the sound guy that's putting y'all, y'all giving stuff to, to Samori and Alami to get the stuff out on the air. And then you go to the next level after that. Come on. And that's, in fact, that's the big problem. You, you, what's, what's that guy, Anderson Cooper? He did his internship, I'm not talking about his rich name, but he did his internship at CIA. Now what that means, he was a young man, and let me say, we're good friends there. You think, and those friendships last. So right now- it's CIA. Yeah, he did internship at CIA. Yeah, believe me. Look at that. Anyway, what I'm trying to so say- So he was in, well, okay, CIA, all right. Before he, before he- no, I, the thing. I mean, you don't have to be. I believe he wasn't the operative in the field. I mean, he, no, no. he's in the he's in the office or whatever have you. But you're making friends. so like John Ali went ahead and got trained at Quantico by the FBI, but supposedly never became an FBI agent. Well, I don't know, but I'll, I'll get I'll get to that in the book. But my real point is that so these relationships you have. So now, so it's one of his friends from the old days could say, "Hey, blah 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 blah." The problem is this. Al, you're where you are. How come you ain't talked to Basir? You're, you, you know, you used to, you know, you have a relationship. How come you ain't talked to me? Why you keep on talking to those your, your, your people, your, your, your cigar smoking, you know, brandy sniffing people? Because they don't want it. They, they sold out completely. Well, too yeah, completely. Listen, oh, too completely. I mean, there's so many payrolls that he was on, and as a matter of fact, at one particular point, if I recall correctly, he had an apartment in uh, oh, yes. Trump's. Yes. Uh, apartments on the west side, yep. probably rent free, yeah. or something to that effect, or whatever. I mean, you know, there's a lot of stuff that you know people don't talk about. So now, you know, he can go and he can denounce Trump and all the rest of that old stuff because he can afford his own apartment now. <laughs> well, here's the thing. I, don't, I really, to me, that strat is not who I deal with. You know, that's why I mean, Melvin, the stuff that we're doing. I would just, I'm just being, well, my fraternity. You know what? What they're realizing? Hey, we all get they're getting old, and like, not just the furniture, but the, the people who knew the, the start of it and what we did, whatever have it. And we got to start doing stuff. And I think they're finally coming together. And I'm trying to tell everybody. I've been telling people for so many years: record your elders, record your, your grandparents. Please record. I don't care how you just record them. They don't have to be good quality. Just record them. And so I've been way like say on my YouTube channel because it's not monetized. You know, it's not monetized. It's on that you know Creative Commons. Anybody from fraternity can look at the town, you know, they can write in the comments something. This is a way of archiving our thing. Now, see, now, nobody's going to listen to me. Ain't nobody know who I am. But, <laughs> dude, no, I'm serious. But, but, what, but what happens is that's, that now that model is out there. Some people are going to start picking up that model and doing it. And that's all I want. People like, uh, uh, people like the people we've been talking about. That's not what that's not what they want. They don't want to put the model out there and do go about their business. No, they want to, you know. In fact, there's a film called uh, I think it's called The Twelve Apostles of Nelson Mandela, mm. right? And it's really it's about these guys that were Nelson Mandela circle, and then when they got freedom, whatever happened, instead of going to government, they went back to what they were doing. Because they're freedom fighters, they're not, they, you know. So all these people that went to government, the reason why they're not doing anything is because they don't have 
the skills. Just because you can you, you can uh, field strip an AK-47 yeah. doesn't mean that you can run a government. Yeah, that I mean, was the, that was the whole thing in regards to if we look at the Soweto uprising and the young people and the children not going to school, they lost years and years of possible education. Now, of course, there's the issue with the colonial education itself, but one of the interesting contradictions that we had, I remember, uh, I guess this was prior to uh, Nelson Mandela being released and South Africans were here organizing, there was an education conference. And I went to an education conference, all kinds of people were there, whatever. And they were saying, well, you know, we want to have a non-racial education. That's what they were talking about. And I'm saying, after apartheid, how can you have a non-racial education? It's impossible. You can't do that. You have to have an education that embraces the African people, the real people, the salt of the earth in South Africa, and that goes ahead and reconstructs history. This is something that's necessary for you to go ahead and be a free, self-governing people. Well, you now, see, you know, after I went ahead and did what I did, including talking about models that we had here, they were like, well, no, we're not going to invite you here. That's, well, that's the point. Those people, that, that, that generation, those people, <laughs> they were trained by who they were trained by. That's what they Right now, in South Africa, was so interesting. Like, uh, when I go back and I got to go through Cape Town, uh, uh, then I, then I got to go through what's formerly known as Grahamstown, now called Wakana, because they took back their name. And that's what the South Africa is doing right now. They're, chain, they're, 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 they're bringing back the, what I call the autochthonous names. That's the first, that's some kind of step. Yeah. Now, the, in other words, the, the people are sitting in, 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 in government is not doing that right now. They're being forced to do that. By who? By the young people, the people that I just, remember the guy I told you, uh, uh, Mr. Coley, the guy that I work with, those, that generation, well, they look, know what's going on. Look at Steve Biko. I mean, look at, you know, these particular folks. I mean, look at the struggle in regards to PAC versus ANC. And talking about, well, let's rename the country. Let's call it Azania. That's right. As opposed to calling it South Africa. That's right. You know, let's go ahead and begin to decolonize as opposed to recolonize. And who, who put a squash on that? Those same people that, that, that don't want that education. Though. Yeah, yeah. You but, see? you know, even then, if you remember, I mean, talking about Subukwe and them, you know, they were expelled out of the ANC for being too Africanist back in the 1950s. Well, that was what like, saying. what, you 1956? Can't talk about the, let's just bring this back home. I don't want to really get it against the ANC. a whole other thing with that. <laughs> if you, okay, look, the ANC is like the NAACP. They were, they were born with white people there. So you, their white people are in their DNA, okay? That's the problem. And then, and then when, when, when people- Yeah, we from, gotta say, there was a few white it revolutionaries. Doesn't, it doesn't matter, yes, yes, but white people are in their DNA, that's what I'm trying to say. Okay. NAACP started, white people are in their DNA. Yep. Okay, it's just as simple as that, whether they're good, bad, or integrated, those are or not. That's why it's the really National matter. Association of <laughs> Colored People. Okay. okay. <laughs> Now, now what, what, in other words, well, why does the system keep on trying to put white, what, white people in white people? No, I went to William Lloyd Garrison uh, a public, you know, uh, PS31, William Lloyd Garrison School. Hey, that boy was bad. That's, that was a wolf. <laughs> you know? One white, white person that's, you know, whatever. But, but still, that's his DNA. Then what they, then they, then they got slick. They said, hey, we're educating these, we're gonna let us, let's educate some of these Negroes. Just, 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 just like we get some more W.E.B. Du Bois and stuff like that, mm. right? And then they start, what? These Greek fraternities and stuff like that. And so with these Greek fraternities, what do you get? You get the boule. Yeah. And what's the boule? They're doing the white people. They, they basically, now they are white. And they're turning against us. And, and, and putting, putting people down. And whatever have you. Yeah, they got some functioning, but that's 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 in the deal. So we always had informants and whatever have you, da 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 da. So that's why it can't be a, a, a way for visual politics. It's got to be really from the struggle. What's your bona fides? You could put you could put your bona fides up against anybody. People don't even know. I was looking at stuff stuff that I had done. Let me give you this. Is, Stuff that I done. You no, know, I was in the Air Force. Well, why did you go in the Air Force? There was absolutely no reason I should have been in the Air Force because I was trained by Bobby and Billy Shepard in a revolutionary cell. We took over Bronx Community College. And, and I didn't even know I was going because I walked by faith, not by sight. 
But what I realized, because I got a little guilt at the point because, you know, people were dying in Vietnam. And I never, know that. You were draft age. That's right. Yeah, that's that's one thing. But what, but I went, I spent my time in the States. And I was at, a, 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 at my final couple of years was at... Um, was at uh, what we call a uh, 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 McGuire Air Force Base dispensary. Mm. Now, when people come to me, oh, thank you for your service. I'm down south, you know, when I'm down in Virginia. Thank you for your service. I know what they're saying. Thank you for defending the country, blah, blah, blah. But you know what I was doing? You know what I did? I just found a newspaper article. I forgot because I was, my friends, I, was, I, I didn't forget, but I sort of forgot. I'm one person. I'm the one that hold my, had my whole lab. You know what we were doing? We were in the community doing sickle cell testing and lead poison said we went up to New York we got there's a picture of, 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 of Lindsay giving us in the Air Force us. doing Black Panther party work <laughs> that's what I'm trying to say so, so, so what I'm trying to say is we, we, I, so I did do, I did a, I'm still I was still me now I'm into, plus I started to call Black Caucus which is a whole other thing they were just too through with us you know what I mean my point really is if you can yeah, you, if you start to shoot, but if you can do something else, you do. Uh, you have your downtime. You politics, like like, um, uh, 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 like Spike, like, like the, the the brothers. You know, the the, the five brothers, whatever. You know, no, Spike the, Lee's movie. Uh, the five. Well, we, well, the five bloods. Yeah, yeah, the five bloods. I, I start using the now. I use the all the time now. Duh. So the, it's, it's a tribute to it. But what what was what was the Chadwick Boseman character doing? He was doing political education, even though they had to. And that's my point. These people don't want to do that. That's my biggest point. I don't, don't, you know, you know? <laughs> yeah. I mean, once again, you know, back to Black Lives Matter, you know, you got this big amorphous mass of people with no political education, no training, no idea of where we go, defund the police, which, I mean, just goes, I mean, you know, that that's something that's going to be defeated in legislatures and everything else all around the world. But I teach become, police officers on Friday. I, you know, and I've said publicly, I said, listen, I can talk about all kinds of things with the police. I can't say defund the police. I can talk about radical restructuring. I can talk about specific changes to go ahead and be made. But I can't just talk about defund. And when you talk about that, that's just like if you've got a, a child and you give them an allowance and they do something bad, you say, all right, I'm going to defund you, which is taking your allowance away. <laughs> you but it doesn't change, yeah. and it doesn't change anything. It's just a punishment. You got to go ahead and change policy. You got to change behaviors. But You're not worse. just the money. It gets worse than that because when you say something like that, it becomes catchy. Like Black Lives Matter is catchy. Yeah, so now everybody talking about defunding the police. The who, who, first of all, who pushed that? Who pushed that so-called na that narrative? Who pushed that catchphrase? And that means absolutely whatever. And that's the problem yeah. because they got the media thing so they can push that cat phrase. And everybody says it. Bad. You just said about Azania, whatever have you. My thing in South Africa, you know, when I, every t every chance I get, I don't call it South Africa. I say I'm going, I say I'm going down to, I'm going down to Southern Africa. I call it Southern Africa. I don't call it, and for me, Southern Africa means the whole, all the Sadic nations all there. So that's what I'm. That's what I'm doing. What I'm trying to say is, it takes individual people to start something, and because if it, if it hits, it hits. It don't. It don't. I'm not going to stop saying Southern Africa. You know, because that's what it means to me. I want the whole region. Oh, there's a lot of stuff happening with, with the AU too. It's kind of interesting. You know what I mean? So things are things are changing. Yeah, yeah. And with this economy going to going to fall, so you can see some stuff is going to be really happening. Yeah. Well, one of the things in terms of the AU is since you know they went ahead and and started talking about. You know, the people in the diaspora would be another region. Yeah, they're doing that. Is yeah. that we've got to organize that other region so that there can really yeah, be some input. But that's the Pan African work. Yeah. See what I'm saying? That's, that's the, the work. work. That's the work. No question. It that's, that's the work. Say, that's the work. That's yes. the work. That's the point. Because when they come, then they, they, cause me, they, that that will be sabotaged too. Because remember, there's going to be all kinds of people, you know what I mean? They're, 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 saying they speak. You know, it's just like. Um, you know, uh, a after the uh, the meeting that took place in South Africa in 2001. Uh, you know, when everybody got together, it was supposed to be uh, in y the UN, um, you know, when they were, you know, talking about various and sundry things. Uh, you, know, it's, you know, who will speak for us ultimately? You know, and you got organizations and individuals going ahead and trying to posture and position themselves to be the spokespeople. But, of course, there's got to be some kinds of process by which that happens. And, you know, the interesting thing also is that you've got some folks 
like Reverend Al and others who have issues in regards to working well with others. You remember when you were poor card in elementary oh, school when it said working well with others yeah, and you know you get A, B, C, D, whatever. Something These folks, they they not good in terms of working well with others. If they're in charge, if it's them, they're good and they're down. If it's somebody else, they got issues. Okay? And in some instances cannot even work in such kinds of formations. Yeah, they, they yeah. Yeah. You know? Yeah. And that's a problem. Because, you know, if we're dealing with a mass, you know, this, this whole thing, I, I don't know if people are still talking about, you know, revolutionary vanguard or some shit like that, but, you know, we have to really be careful in regards to going ahead and what, what uh, we really want to do. Because you can have a small organization helping to build a mass organization, but you still need that mass organization. Well, that's what I'm saying. Look, my point, I'm going back to my node model. I'm a node. I mean, I want, I want a little node. I don't need 29 people around me. I need, I, I, I need only three people. That's all I need. Three people. I'm off and running. That's my inner circle. You know why? Because if somebody's going to stab me in the back, it's got to be one of those three people. Right. You know what I'm saying? Right. <laughs> I don't want to be. I don't want to be in some mass organization that could be anybody, okay. including my security. All no, right. all right. And that's why you don't. Only people want to profile up there. That's the people that have this problem. Well, you remember Battle of Algiers and stuff, you know, stuff like that. So you know, you've got these, you know, little units or whatever else it is that are, you know, semi-autonomous and didn't even necessarily know each other, which is why. If in fact people right. in one unit got captured, that's right. they couldn't go ahead. That's the nodes I'm talking about. And talk about this unit over here. You know, they couldn't because they didn't necessarily know it was kept in that particular way. Oh, let me let, let me stop here and then do another thing. I have one. I have another uh, thing. I gotta run this one past you. This is really interesting. <laughs> <laughs>